Do this to make your arm lock inescapable, part five. So you're set up, you've S-mounted, you've gotten everything here. Our hands are properly placed where this lead hand is on top. I've leaned my ear to the leg, here we go, elbow deep. And as I pass my leg over, I begin to sit, but he defends, he bends his arm. So the one thing that we always wanna keep in mind is that as we break down arm locks, we'll talk about grip breaking on a separate video, but we'll just use a really simple one and in a way that I was able to break free on Lance's arm. Here's what we need. We need his arm connected to my chest as I fall. So you see that one elbow stays deep until a very specific time. When the arm reaches extension or in a competition setting, most likely hyperextension, that's the time to change the two wrists or two hands on my wrist. You change prematurely then I'm gonna have an exceptionally weak arm lock. Not only this, you could see that if I hold his arm like this, Lance could easily curl me right back up off the floor. Whoop. Because I have too much slack in my elbows. When we fall, we need an elbow deep until the arm is an extension, which now the bicep is fully extended, much weaker than a flex bicep. Now we can go to two hands on the wrist and we can begin our breaking mechanics on the arm lock. So avoid two hands until the arm is at extension. Then you're gonna need it to control the position of the thumb. For more high-level jujitsu tips, follow me.